Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. Today's video is going to be all about selling on Facebook Marketplace. I have been selling items on Facebook Marketplace for years. I actually completely paid for our move when we sold our house from selling on Facebook Marketplace. Like I just sold as much as I could on Facebook Marketplace and paid cash, paid those movers cash. I'm gonna tell you all of the tips and tricks that I use, everything from how I list my items what I price them at, uh, keywords that I use, and the actual physical selling of the item. It's all gonna be included in this video. If you haven't seen my video all about buying on Facebook Marketplace, make sure you watch that. I'm gonna put a little card up above so you can check that out. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, please make sure you do that. I am at Megan Bell Made. I often share on my stories when I buy or sell things on Facebook Marketplace and just kind of give you a little inside look of that. And please make sure you're subscribed because if you're new here, I am um, always doing something, sharing with you guys what I'm doing in real life, some of my DIYs, projects, house updates. I bought a 120 year old house recently um, that I am currently trying to decorate from things I'm buying on Facebook Marketplace. So uh, please make sure you do that and that you're on for notifications so that you know as soon as I upload a video. So the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about when it comes to selling on Facebook Marketplace is your listing and how you're going to keyword things, okay? So I am going to actually do, I'm gonna take you onto my phone here and I'm going to pretend that I am selling an item. So I'm gonna create a new listing. I actually sold this item last night. And so I have some photos of it and I'll talk a little bit more about photos in a minute, but I sold a day bed that I made a while back. So I have some pictures here of it, some stock photos, and I'm gonna add that to the listing. So I've taken some good photos of it and um, I have everything up here that the person buying it needs to know all the way down to the dimensions of it. I think that's important. If you can't include a photo of that, you're gonna wanna make sure you put that in your listing. But I'm gonna title it as stackable day bed um, slash sofa because that's what it is, okay? That's, that's what it is. I wanna use terms people might be searching for. They might be looking for a couch, a sofa, a day bed, a bed. These are all things they're gonna be looking for. So that's gonna be, and I can include some of that in my description box. It doesn't all need to be in the title. That's what I'm gonna choose for my title because it's a very sort of, it's a specific title, but it's also still kind of basic. I listed this for $300 and I'm gonna put it in bed beds and bed frames because essentially it is a bed even though it could be interpreted as a sofa it is a bed you want to think about your categories too when you're listing you want to try to be um, as specific as you can while staying general so I, I don't necessarily want to put this in like futons right futons is an option even if it was a futon i want people who are searching for beds to find this so that's what the category i'm going to put it in and it's in i would say it's in good condition I'm going to skip all of this. Some of this is too specific for me. The color, the bed type, bed size, I don't need to do all of that. And I don't really suggest doing it unless you had, um, see, to toddler bed would be a reason. But even then, I, I really don't think that these are good categories that uh, to use. I sometimes think it's too specific. The brand is one you could use if you wanted to, but I, I suggest skipping that as well. So in the description box, um, I'm going to, you know, typically if this were a real listing, I would write everything about it. So um, I would let them know all the details, all of the flaws of it, if there's an issue with it. Um, I'm going to skip all of that, but I suggest that when you make a listing, you let people know. Is there a chip in the side? Is it missing a leg? Um, or is it in perfect condition? Condition? Is it new? Is it flawless? Those are those are things to write. I like using the word flawless if something is flawless. It's a very attractive word. It makes me feel, if you say it's like new or it's practically brand new, it's not as attractive as saying something is flawless. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is just keywords. So after I've written my, my description, this is a DIY project, blah, blah, blah. Letting the person know I made this item, it's not, it's imperfect, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, those are some of the things I would have included in the description. Below that, I'm gonna talk about some keywords that you can use because you can't put everything in your title. So I'm gonna put CB2. 
I'm gonna put Ikea. I'm gonna put um, modern, boho, daybed, couch, sofa. Um, and you can also, you know, you don't need to like stack these. You could do commas if you wanted to. So comma, Ikea, comma, modern. The idea is that you're letting Facebook know where to show your listing. You want to have these keywords in here because anytime someone types any of these in, your listing could pop up and it could be shown to someone who would not otherwise see your listing. What are some other things I can list this as? Boho, daybed, couch, sofa. Actually, the girl who bought it, bought it for her toddler. So I could say toddler bed. There's a plethora of things I could use, but using brands as well. So if it looks like a brand, like it looks sort of like anthropology, I'm gonna put anthropology or urban outfitters is another one. If you can think of any brand that your item looks like, even if it's not the brand, but especially if it is the brand, please include the brand. Like this is Ikea, so I have Ikea in there. But if it looks like another brand, then list that in there because somebody might be looking or like uh, another one here would be World Market. World Market has items like that. You need to have these keywords in order for people to be able to find your listing. If I left all of this out and I just had stackable daybed slash sofa, the percentage of people that would see my listing versus the amount that would see with all those keywords is just so small. So like I said, you wanna really think about those keywords, think about what you're using, um, what you could possibly list it as. And you don't wanna go overboard and you don't want it to be unrelatable to, to your listing. You want to list it so that the right person can find it. What can you sell on Facebook Marketplace? This is a question I had from a friend recently. It's like, oh, well, I don't really know what I, what I should list. Because I was saying, oh, you have all these things. These are worth money. I don't really know what I should list. What's worth money? What's, what is someone going to buy? Um, I think anything, honestly, almost anything could be sold on Facebook Marketplace. Like, is it something that you would want to buy? Um, or is it something that, you know, you would easily see at a thrift store or something that's easily accessible that's probably not going to really, it's not in high demand, right? So selling your Dyson vacuum cleaner, maybe you upgraded and you have a Dyson vacuum cleaner that you want to sell, um, that would be a good item to list. That is something that I would buy on Facebook Marketplace. I would buy a used vacuum, a, an older Dyson, older model, um, versus selling your broom, you know? Does anybody want to buy a used broom? Probably not. You can go buy one at the hardware store or at Home Depot for like five or 10 bucks. So, and that's what I mean about like kind of being able to discern between those two things and make those decisions on what is valuable and what is not. Um, something I listed a long time ago that never sold, and I think I ended up listing it for like $2. And I was like, please, somebody come buy this, was a panini press. It was a nice panini press. I think I got it at um, uh, Williams Sonoma or one of those places. It just was, I think, too specific. You know, nobody was really interested in it. So I ended up taking it to the thrift store. <laughs> but if you have an old dresser or you have some of your grandma's old dishes laying around and they're in good condition, you know, these are things I think are valuable on Facebook Marketplace. Some things are going to go really fast. Some things are in higher demand. And some things might sit for a couple weeks. If you have the room to store them and you take good photos of them, um, I think they could eventually sell on Facebook Marketplace. It's just sometimes a matter of time. I want to touch really lightly on taking good photos. I mentioned that when I was talking about writing a, a listing a few minutes ago. Take good photos of your items. I think you can on Facebook Marketplace have up to 10 photos. Having good lighting, using natural light from a window coming in your house, taking it outside to photograph it so you can get true colors. You know, don't photograph everything on a rainy, dark day. You know, don't take pictures of things inside your home at night using that sort of like yellowy overhead light. That's not gonna look attractive. You wanna have nice photos of your, uh, of your items so that people know what it looks like and can imagine what it looks like in their home. So having a clean background is really nice. If you have a white wall to photograph it in front, front of, or if say you're selling a dresser, you know, clean everything off of the dresser. Don't have like, you know, a box of band-aids on top of the dresser. You know, maybe you could even stage it. You could put a, like a stack a couple of books or put a little vase of flowers on there. That always makes for a more attractive listing, in my opinion. 
Also, having any retail or stock photos of the item if you have that available. Like I was selling that day bed, it was made from an Ikea day bed. I have the stock photos listed in there as well so they can see what it was I purchased. And then also any sort of flaws or anything that maybe is wrong with the item, having a photo of that available as well is important. Be transparent, okay? If something is jacked up but you still wanna sell it, Make sure you price it accordingly, but be transparent about that. If you have a sofa that you're trying to sell and one of the legs is loose, don't wait till the person comes to pick it up and you list it at full price and now it's uncomfortable for them to be able to bargain with you about it to tell them that the leg is loose. Put it in the description box. People want to know what they're getting into um, right up front. It's going to make it a more attractive listing in my opinion. If somebody says, you know, hey, there's a scratch on the side here and there's a, somebody had, got, accidentally got a pin on this side and then the leg is loose and there's pictures of those things, then I don't feel like I'm gonna show up and find a big yellow stain in the middle as well. I feel like I know everything I need to know about the item and I feel like I have all of the information I need to make a decision on whether or not I wanna buy it. So I really suggest just being transparent right off the bat. Tell people everything you can about the item. If it's not so simple, I always put at the top, this is like um, uh, kind of more important lately when it comes to selling on Facebook Marketplace, I say, please read the entire description before you message me because it seems like nobody is reading these descriptions anymore. People just want, are fast and they message you and they wanna know if it's available. Um, so if you have a lot of information or something specific you want to tell somebody about the item that you're selling, I suggest putting that in the top of your description box so that they will actually read your description. So the next thing I want to talk about is pricing. Know what you're listing and how much it's worth and be reasonable. The day bed I just showed you, for instance, that day bed cost me $447 from Ikea not including the wood and the web cane that I used to build the frame of it. But I've had it for a year, it's been slept on. Um, it has a little bit of wear and tear on the frame. So I would say it probably cost me about $500 to make it, maybe 525. It has wear and tear, like I said. There was a little water stain on one of the mattress covers. If I listed it for 525, maybe it would sell in like a couple weeks. Maybe it wouldn't sell at all. I mean, everything is so expensive right now. People are trying to buy secondhand. People are trying to buy secondhand on Facebook Marketplace because they want a deal. Listing it at $300, I got 30 messages in like 15 minutes. I had to actually mark it pending and I needed to kind of go through and filter through who was serious and who messaged me first and all of that. I got $300 instead of waiting, you know, weeks or months to get 525 when I might not even get 525. I think that 300 was reasonable for it because like I said, just to buy the bed itself from Ikea is $447. So the person who bought it feels like A, they got a unique item and B, they got a good deal. If they did their research and they looked up the item on Ikea then they know how much it costs, they know that already they're saving $150 plus they're getting the frame basically for free. I hope that makes sense. But I, I urge you to kind of think about what you're selling and understand that you're selling it on Facebook Marketplace and people are looking for deals. It kind of doesn't matter really how much you paid for something. Once you buy most things, it's just like a car, you drive it off a lot, it loses value. So if I go to Target and I buy a, let's say a dining room table and it costs me $200 and it's actually still available from Target to buy for $200, and I, I, maybe I used it for a year and I wanna sell it, even though it's still available from Target, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not gonna post it for $200 just because that's what I paid for it. I'm looking for the person who doesn't wanna pay full price. I can't return the item because it's been a year. Um, a smart way to list an item like that would be maybe 125 or 130. And if no one is interested in within a week, then maybe you can lower your price and kind of have that maybe listed $20 more than what you would be willing to accept in case someone wants to bargain with you and you kind of have that room. But like I said, it's just kind of thinking about what it's worth and what somebody is really actually willing to pay for the item. If it's available to buy new, all of those things are things to take into consideration. The next thing I'm gonna say is you want to be available. If I list something on Facebook Marketplace, I'm not gonna list it, post it, and then not check my phone for the rest of the day. I'm gonna be available to 
answer any question I have from anybody who messages me because I want to sell the item. So I have my phone close by me when I list items. So when I sell something on Facebook Marketplace, I prefer to do porch pickups. It's not very often that I just let people come into my home. I try, if it's a piece of furniture, to move it out onto my porch so that if they want to just come and look at it or if whatever they want to do, if they're coming to pick it up, they don't have to actually come into my home. That is my comfort zone. And it is like the one thing that COVID actually did that makes it things easier is porch pickups because I feel like people didn't do didn't do porch pickups before COVID and now they do it's like a normal thing when I buy anything or sell anything on Facebook marketplace I prefer to do porch pickups and the other thing I want to talk about is having your apps available to accept money obviously cash is nice but most of the time people want to use an app to either give you a deposit for an item to hold it or um, just to pay for the item I prefer using Venmo cash app and PayPal and I have those apps available. I know my username or my email so that they can send me the money easily. And I think that's important to do, to have those apps available so that people can send you money easily and it's not a complicated thing. You don't have to you know, spend all this time setting those things up, figuring out how you're gonna transfer money. But what I do is when someone's serious about coming to pick an item up, I put it out on the porch, I give them my address, and I don't give my address out until someone is actually serious. They're like, I'm coming in an hour or I'm on my way. If someone says I'm coming tomorrow, I say, okay, message me in the morning and I'll give you my address. And that's another thing I wanna talk about is deposits and holding items. You never know who's gonna see your listing within those first few days. And if you wanna get full price for what you listed an item for, and like I said, it should be a reasonable price, a fair price, I don't drop my price until after the three days. If after three days, only one or two, two people have messaged me or have asked to drop the price, then I might go back to those first couple people who asked me to drop the price and offer them a lower price, or I might just change the listing with a lower price, and that will entice more people to message me about the item. I'm not always spot on when it comes to listing items fairly. I do my best, and sometimes maybe I list them a little bit too high, and I have noticed when I've list, listed them too low because I just get a ton of messages, and everybody wants to buy it, it's because it's a really good deal. So it takes some time and experience to kind of figure that out. I don't really feel like I've done that yet, but uh, maybe in a couple more years I will. <laughs> the last thing I wanna talk about is scams. There's so many scams on Facebook Marketplace, and one of the most recent ones I've noticed is when I list an item, I get a message right away, like within seconds, and it's somebody who says they need to know my the last four digits of my telephone number to verify that I'm a real person or something crazy. Here's my advice. No matter what the scam is or no matter what anybody tells you, keep it, Facebook Marketplace is so simple. Keep it simple. Keep it on the Facebook Marketplace app. Keep it on Facebook Messenger. Don't give anybody your telephone number. Don't give your address out until someone says they're on the way. Use the porch pickup um, option and you shouldn't have any issues. Don't invite anybody into your home. Don't go inside anybody's home. They don't need to know any personal information about you, including your telephone number. That is how you get looped into a scam. So those are rules I sort of live by. I think it's very simple. If anything comes up that's outside of that and it just feels sketchy, listen to your gut, be safe. Having the ring doorbell is such a nice thing for these porch pickups, I wanna mention that. If you don't have a ring doorbell, it's really nice if you're often selling on Facebook Marketplace because then you can just set the item outside and if someone has an issue with the item, you know, you can see when they come, you can see when they go and they pick up the item. If they wanna communicate with you verbally, they can talk to you through that ring doorbell. I really love that as a safety feature. I don't have to come outside of my house to show them anything, to talk to them. I can just communicate with them via the Facebook Messenger app and through uh, the Ring doorbell. And it just keeps everything really safe, really tidy and neat. And you know, I prefer electronic payments, but every now and then someone wants to pay cash and that kind of becomes tricky with porch pickups. But if you have a safe place at your location outside of your house where you can have them put cash, I think that's okay as long as it's not a large quantity. You can always be outside during the day. Maybe you're on the front of your porch when you meet somebody or you have you wait until your partner is home with you or you have somebody come over, a friend, if you're really feeling uncomfortable. Um, like I said, just use your common sense when it comes to these things and um, always be safe in that way. And I wish you much luck selling on Facebook Marketplace. Hopefully you can make some extra money to afford 
something coming up in your life or if you're like me, buying more stuff on Facebook Marketplace. It seems like every time I sell something on Facebook Marketplace, I end up buying something for the same amount, if not more, on Facebook Marketplace. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.